One of the most important papers in scientific history was published in 1958, called On the Origin of Species and written by Sir Charles Darwin. This was the first scientific proof for the theory of evolution and was just one example of the numerous discoveries that would invigorate the scientific community and promote greater investment into and research and development of the sciences in years to come. August of 1887, not 30 years after Darwin proposed his theory of evolution, Erwin R. J. Schrödinger is born to Rudolf and Georgina Schrödinger in Vienna, Austria. His father's family had been living in Vienna for several generations, and while Erwin was a boy, Rudolf owned a small linoleum business. With this, he was able to provide Erwin, his only child, with a comfortable and nurturing youth. Schrödinger was a gifted child, easily motivated by his fascinations. He began his studies with a private tutor at home, until he was able to enroll in the Akademisches Gymnasium of Vienna in 1898. Growing up in Vienna, a city with such a rich history and reverence for the arts, Erwin grew a deep love both for culture and art, with the encouragement of his father, of course. Erwin often showed great regard and thanks for his father for giving him such a comfortable upbringing and diverse education. He is quoted as describing his father as a man of broad culture, a friend, teacher, and an inexhaustible partner in conversation. His father had always had a passion for science, specifically botany, breeding, and evolution, a passion he passed down to his son. Erwin and his father were known to have long scientific discussions. A favorite topic of conversation? Darwin's On the Origin of Species, which remained Erwin's favorite book all his life. Erwin graduated in the spring of 1906, and in the fall, he enrolled in the University of Vienna. While there, he mostly focused on theoretical physics, taught by a Frederick Hanselhor a former student of Ludwig Boltzmann, the Austrian physicist who, in the late 1800s, pioneered the development of statistical mechanics, the mathematical process that explains and predicts how properties of atoms determine the physical properties of matter, something which Schrodinger would need later on in his career. Hasenhor wasn't without accomplishments of his own. A 2013 article from Science Daily showed that Hanselhor was nearly the one to explain the relationship between mass and energy that was later dictated by Einstein's infamous equation E equals mc squared. However, Hanselhor arrived at the conclusion E equals 3 eighths mc squared, likely because he failed to account for the loss of mass and energy from the irradiation of the material he was studying. Years later, in reflection, Schrodinger would say that Hasenhor was extremely influential in his pursuit of education, only being surpassed by his own father. In 1910, Schrodinger earned his PhD after which he promptly served a year of mandatory service in the army. In June of 1914, the Archduke of Austria, Franz Ferdinand, was assassinated, bringing about the beginning of what would become the deadliest war the world had ever seen, made even more so by the large-scale use of newly militarized technologies like the airplane and the Maxim gun. The following month, Schrodinger was drafted and stationed at the Italian front. It was here where he first learned of Einstein's general theory of relativity and was immediately struck by the significance he saw in it. Though it was difficult to stay up to date with the latest scientific news from the front, he still managed to publish a paper from his post in the spring of 1917. The Great War resulted in a total economic collapse across many parts of Europe, hitting Vienna, his home, particularly hard. The subsequent recession financially ruined his family. Finding it no longer possible to make a living at home, he sought opportunity in the wider German-speaking world. In April of 1920, Schrodinger married Anne-Marie Bertel. Just after, he found an academic position at the University of Vienna in Germany as an assistant to Maxwell Wien, brother of William Wien, winner of the 1911 Nobel Prize in Physics for his work on heat radiation, something that would prove integral to the formulation of quantum mechanics. Following his stint at Jena, he taught at a few other prestigious European schools before moving to the University of Zurich in Switzerland, where he replaced Max von Lev, a German physicist who won the 1914 Nobel Prize in Physics for his discovery of X-ray diffraction by crystals. Not long after arriving in Zurich, however, Erwin was diagnosed with tuberculosis and sent to an alpine sanatorium in the small city of Arosa, Switzerland, to recover. It was here where he would write one of his most important papers on a remarkable property of the quantized orbits of a single electron. Louis de Bray was a French physicist whose PhD thesis in 1924 became a groundbreaking and fundamental piece to the puzzle that is quantum physics. In his thesis, he discussed the wave nature of electrons and suggested that all matter has wave properties. It was the development of this idea that would eventually win Schrodinger the Nobel Prize in Physics several years later. Schrodinger began to think of electrons as waves, but soon grew a detaste for the accepted duality of electrons. Instead, he rejected the idea of electrons as particles and insisted on treating them as waves, something he carried bullishly through his work. He tried to account for the tendency of electrons to behave as particles with the theoretical concept of wave packets. However, this was later shown to be an insufficient explanation. Another German physicist, by the name of Max Born, was the first one to decipher the real meaning behind the mathematical solutions. He concluded that the wave function for a hydrogen atom represents each of its physical states in which it can be used to calculate the probability of finding an electron at a certain point in space, an explanation he published in a series of papers in 1926. Schrodinger's wave equation was the second theoretical explanation for the movement of electrons. 
It was Werner Heisenberg who was the first to publish a theoretical explanation in 1925. However, his theory relied on extremely complex mathematics, which was difficult for most to grasp. The same year, Schrodinger came up with his wave equation, later to be known as the Schrodinger equation. However, he did not publish his findings until the following year, after having gained insights from Max Born. Using the framework of Niel Bohr's representation of the hydrogen atom, in conjunction with the particle wave duality principle, Erwin was able to develop an equation that precisely described the structure of any atom, while Niels Bohr's theorem only applied to hydrogen. The Schrodinger equation became the celebrated model for the electron and basis for quantum mechanics, quickly adopted by physicists because his theories could be easily visualized. Later, it was found that both Heisenberg and Schrodinger were explaining the same thing, just in different ways. To the great dismay of his students and faculty, he left Zurich after six years to work at the University of Berlin in 1927. Here, he became a German national and colleague of Albert Einstein. The course he taught was considered to be the best of all the science courses taught there. His lectures were informal, and he rarely referred to notes. In 1933, when Nazis began to seize power, Schrodinger chose to leave Germany because he was morally opposed to the ideas that they were spreading. He left for Oxford, and with the help of the head of the physics department, he was able to procure a fellowship. Around the same time, it was announced that he would be receiving the Nobel Prize in physics with his old colleague, Paul Dirac. In 1935, Schrodinger published a three-part essay entitled The Present Situation in Quantum Mechanics. It was in this essay that the world was introduced to the iconic cat paradox, or Schrodinger's cat. A thought experiment involving a cat. He imagined taking a cat and placing it in a sealed box with a device that had a 50% chance of killing the cat in the next hour. At the end of that hour, he asked, what is the state of the cat? Common sense suggests that the cat is either alive or dead. But Schrodinger pointed out that according to quantum physics, at the instant before the box is opened, the cat is equal parts alive and dead at the same time. It's only when the box is opened that we see a single definite state. Until then, the cat is a blur of probability, half one thing and half the other. This seems absurd, which was Schrodinger's point. He found quantum physics so philosophically disturbing that he abandoned the theory he had helped make and turned to writing about biology. He finished his career at the Dublin Institute for Advanced Studies after a brief stop and flee professorship back in Vienna. Though he made tremendous contributions to an array of disciplines like color theory and biology, he is remembered most for having revolutionized the view of small-scale particle physics, which enables the creation of semiconductors, transistors, and indeed all electronics that allow you to surf the web at your local artisanal Vienna-inspired coffee shop. So thank you, Schrodinger.